Welcome to Peak Flow Instruction. This is the video that uh, will tell you specifically how to use and instruct a peak flow meter. Before performing a peak flow measurement, be sure you wash your hands, check the physician order, and scan the chart for information about the patient and the reason for the peak flow. Also assess your patient. Assess pulse, respiration, breath sounds, etc. And obtain your supplies. In this video, we will be using this spirometer by Spirometrics. There's many other types of spirometers, but you'll need to learn those specifically. This is the spirometer we'll be using. Peak flow measurement is a very simple test. Basically, all you're going to have the patient do is take in a deep breath in, followed by a hard, fast exhalation into the peak flow meter. Remember, this is used before and after bronchodilators to check see if there's a difference in measurement, as well as assessing the status of an asthmatic patient. This is the peak flow checkoff after you washing your hands and checking the order, you will introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Daryl from Respiratory. And also uh, uh, identify the patient by ID. This is Matt. And birth date. Your birth date, what, your name and birth date. My name is Matthew Shrek, March 21st, 1986. Identify the height so that you can calculate the predicted norms. Five. What is your height? I'm five foot eight. Six. Okay, so you're twenty. My patient's twenty five years old. So I'm going to Using the insert within the box, you will identify his normal peak flow range. Matt's twenty five years old, and his peak flow will be five fifty. Next will be to get the patient in the best possible position, such as sitting on the side of the bed or standing up. Gonna have you sit on the side of the bed here. When you do a peak flow, you'll start out with one thing first. You'll want to take and set the indicator back to zero. See this red dot? We will want to move that all the way down to the lowest possible reading. In this case, it says 50 liters per minute. Then what we're going to do is have the patient take a maximum deep breath in, followed by a fast exhalation out. Okay, like this. Big breath in. Nope. Fast exhalation out. In this case, you're going to then go and look at your peak flow meter and look at the reading. And in this case, it is about 550. Instruct the patient on use of the peak flow. When you do the peak flow, you want to hold it right here where these finger grips are so you're not blocking any airflow. So it will get the correct reading. Take a deep breath in, open your mouth, hold that breath and put this in your mouth and blow into it. Demonstrate that. Okay. And that one's at 550. Awesome. Take the time. Have the patient do it again. That was a good one there. You're at five. 550. And a third time. Another good one. And it's at 550. Record the best peak flow on the uh, patient's chart. Make sure the patient is back in bed and in the correct position. and make sure the bed rails are up.
If this peak flow meter is for home use, you instruct the patient on the uh, zone ranges as well as care and use. The uh, peak flow meter has a little indicator. Now, when setting the green zone measurement, we're going to look at the zones. Green zone is 80% and above. Red zone is 50% and below. And in between the two is yellow zone. So 80% of our 550 is going to be 440. So we're going to take and bring our yellow to green here, yellow to green up to 440. And that indicates that anything above our 440 is going to be within the green zone. Now we're going to take this red zone and bring it up to 274, 275. And there you can see that anything at 275 and below is going to be red zone. And this is going to be the period that you'll want to make sure the patient goes into the emergency room or sees a physician. Now, between the green zone, which is above, and the red zone, which is below, we have the yellow zone. And this is where the physician will most likely have the patient add some additional medications. So check the order for that specifically. Okay, so you would set this at 440 as your green zone. Green zone means the patient is doing well and does not need to do anything more than his normal medication. Between the green zone and 275, which is the red zone, is the yellow zone, and this is where the patient may take some additional medications as a physician explains. So you'd set the yellow zone. You will set. You will have set it. Okay, I, I set your yellow zone to 275 to 400, 450, 440. 440. Okay, and below the 275 into the red zone will indicate the patient should see the physician or go to the emergency room. And I set your red zone at 250 75. or 275 and go to the emergency and you go to the emergency room if, if you don't meet that peak flow. Okay. This unit at home you can run it in your dishwasher for the care and maintenance of it. Thank you. And you can keep that with in the box there with you. Mm -hmm.